Florida woman beat out 933 other competitors and was crowned the 2025 Python Challenge champ. In the first three months since transitioning to the program uh, with Inversa on May 1st, FWC and Inversa have tripled the number of Python removals. Deep within Florida's swamps, wildlife cameras have captured something stunning scientists. For decades, the story was simple. Burmese pythons invaded the Everglades and destroyed everything. But recent discoveries reveal a hidden consequence nobody predicted, and a recovery plan ridiculed worldwide. What researchers uncovered isn't merely ecological collapse. It's an astonishing reversal, rewriting everything we knew about this broken wilderness. Paradise lost. Before catastrophe struck, Florida's Everglades was an ecological marvel spanning 1.5 million acres, valued at over $31.5 billion annually. This wasn't simply wetland. It was a slow-flowing river of grass providing flood protection and drinking water for millions. Life moved in perfect balance. Enormous flocks of herons, egrets, and ibises darkened the skies. Raccoons, opossums, and marsh rabbits navigated sawgrass while bobcats and foxes prowled tree islands called hammocks. American alligators ruled the waterways. It was one of America's last wild places. Nobody imagined how rapidly it could unravel. The nightmare began in August 1992 when Hurricane Andrew, a catastrophic Category 5 hurricane, devastated southern Florida with 165 moihiers winds. It destroyed a reptile breeding facility near Miami, releasing unknown numbers of Burmese pythons, a Southeast Asian species, into the wetlands. But the hurricane wasn't the only culprit. Throughout the 1980s and 90s, Burmese pythons became fashionable exotic pets. People bought adorable $10 hatchlings without realizing these snakes become 10-foot, 50-pound predators within years, eventually exceeding 20 feet and 200 pounds. Overwhelmed owners released them into the Everglades, igniting an ecological time bomb. Here's an unsettling theory. What if the hurricane destroyed a massive undocumented breeding operation, flooding the swamp with thousands of snakes simultaneously? The invasion's explosive speed doesn't align with scattered pet releases. The Everglades was python paradise. Heat, humidity, shallow water, and unlimited defenseless prey. These snakes are camouflage masters holding their breath for 30 minutes, with thermal sensing pits detecting warm-blooded prey and darkness. A single female produces up to 100 eggs per clutch. Without natural predators, populations exploded to an estimated 100,000 to 300,000 pythons. A landmark 2012 study revealed devastating statistics. Raccoon populations plummeted 99.3%. Opossums dropped 98.9%. Bobcats declined 87.5%, not 10% or 50%, 99% vanished, erased. Biologists who've worked the Everglades for decades describe the silence. They remember stopping for raccoons and turtles crossing roads. Now, they see nothing for miles. Small mammals forming the Food Web's foundation have been consumed. The invaders found heaven and devoured it whole. The unwinnable war. As silence became deafening, Florida finally acted. In 2013, officials launched the Florida Python Challenge, inviting the public to hunt invaders for cash. Prizes including a $10,000 grand prize. By 2024, over 800 people participated, capturing 195 pythons. In 2025, they broke records with 294 snakes. But let's do the math. Removing 294 from an estimated 100,000 pythons represents 0.3% of the population. It's emptying the ocean with a teaspoon while the tide rises. Florida hired elite professional hunters. Since 2017, combined efforts eliminated over 23,000 pythons, yet likely under 5% of the total population. For every captured snake, 20 more hatch in endless sawgrass. They deployed thermal camera drones, but pythons regulate body temperature to match surroundings, appearing like warm rocks. They tried robot rabbits. Both failed. The most successful approach used Judas snakes, male pythons with radio transmitters leading researchers to egg-filled females. This worked but remained incredibly slow and expensive. The wildest theory? The snakes are learning. Hunters report pythons avoiding traps and human paths. Judas snakes sometimes lead researchers on bizarre circular chases for months, as if they know they're being followed. Years of effort and billions in funding pointed to one truth. The pythons had won. Scientists admitted full eradication is impossible, but the real enemy wasn't the one they could see, the invisible plague. 
What if Florida's biggest problem wasn't the 20-foot python, but something microscopic nobody knew existed? A silent passenger arrived with the invaders, the snake lungworm, Rhabdias pseudosferocephala. Scientists discovered this during necropsies of native snakes struggling to breathe. Their lungs were clogged with dozens of tiny writhing worms. This lungworm originates from Asia. Pythons and this parasite co-evolved over millennia. Pythons carry it, but rarely suffer harm. Florida's native snakes have zero defense. The life cycle is terrifying. Infected python feces contain lungworm eggs. Insects consume the waste. Eggs hatch inside them. Frogs eat infected insects. Native snakes eat infected frogs. Larvae tunnel through stomach walls into lungs, where they reproduce and clog airways until the snake suffocates. Researchers found native snakes with bleeding lung lesions and worms crawling from their mouths as they gasped final breaths. Pythons were the first wave-ending mammals. The parasite is the second wave-ending native reptiles. The lungworm spread to at least 18 native snake species across dozens of counties, reaching Jacksonville. Here's what terrifies scientists. The lungworm no longer needs pythons. It jumped hosts, spreading independently snake to snake. Even if every python vanished tomorrow, the lungworm would remain. It's here, alive, thriving. Wild theories emerge. Is it mutating? Could it jump to mammals or humans? Researchers say unlikely, but they didn't think it could jump from pythons to garter snakes either. Yet it did. What happens if stray dogs eat infected frogs? What happens to hunters handling infected snakes? One strange twist, Florida. Cottonmouths seem highly resistant. Could their blood hold secrets to a cure? What began as battle against a visible monster became war against an invisible microscopic one. No cure exists, no treatment, no way to stop its spread. Florida was out of options. Then they announced a plan so audacious the world laughed. A desperate gamble. With invasion uncontrollable and parasite plague spreading, Florida announced they were releasing hundreds more snakes to fight the crisis. The world erupted. Fighting snakes with more snakes, what could go wrong? People compared it to cane toads in Australia and mongooses in Hawaii. Ecological disasters where introduced species became worse problems than originals. But this wasn't a Florida man idea. The snake was the eastern indigo, not an invader, but the rightful king reclaiming its throne. The eastern indigo is the emperor of the forest, North America's longest native snake, reaching nine feet with stunning iridescent blue-black scales. Its diet makes it legendary. The eastern indigo is Ophiophagus. It eats other snakes. It's completely immune to pit viper venom, devouring rattlesnakes, cottonmouths, and copperheads. It pins prey with powerful jaws and swallows them alive. It's the undisputed forest floor boss. Its kingdom once stretched from South Carolina through Florida to Mississippi. But that kingdom crumbled. The indigo's fate tied to longleaf pine forests and gopher tortoises. The ancient longleaf ecosystem once covered 90 million acres. Today, 97% is destroyed through logging, development, and fire suppression. Indigos don't dig burrows. They rely entirely on deep sandy burrows dug by gopher tortoises. These burrows shelter 350 species. The tortoise is a keystone species. As forests vanished and tortoises were hunted, indigos disappeared. During the Great Depression, desperate people dug up tortoise burrows for food and killed any snakes inside. By 1978, the eastern indigo was listed as threatened, completely gone from Alabama and North Florida. The laughable plan wasn't adding a new snake. It was restoring a native apex predator humans had eliminated. For decades, conservation groups painstakingly bred indigos in captivity, restored longleaf pine patches, and protected tortoise populations. What looked impulsive was actually one of the most careful, scientifically backed restoration projects ever attempted. Nature fights back. While the world laughed, something unexpected happened. Nature was adapting. In Big Cypress National Preserve, researchers tracked a 13-foot, 52-pound male python named Loki, fitted with a GPS tracker. One December morning, they found him sprawled lifeless, his head completely chewed off. Trail cameras revealed the culprit, a native bobcat estimated at barely 25 pounds. This stunned everyone. A bobcat successfully killed an adult python twice its size, a first. For two decades, pythons were undisputed monsters. Suddenly, Florida's native predators were fighting back. This wasn't isolated. Alligators ambushed smaller pythons. Even endangered Florida panthers took on invaders. One biologist called it a score for the home team. What if native predators are learning, passing knowledge to offspring? What if they're discovering the python's weaknesses? 
Meanwhile, in North Florida's Conakew National Forest, something extraordinary occurred. In autumn 2023, trail cameras captured two wild-born eastern indigo hatchlings, offspring of released adults. For the first time in nearly half a century, eastern indigos successfully reproduced in the wild in North Florida. This wasn't survival, this was revival. As 2024-2025 progressed, more sightings emerged. A strong six-foot male glided through scrub. 19 snakes from earlier releases were thriving. The slow work of restoring longleaf pine ecosystems and protecting gopher tortoise burrows had succeeded. The ecosystem wasn't just being restored, it was beginning to function again. Does this mean indigos will eliminate all pythons? No. Indigos are released in North Florida. Python strongholds are hundreds of miles south. They aren't in the same arena yet. But that's not the point. The real aftermath. The unexpected aftermath is twofold. Nature itself is adapting. Bobcats and alligators are learning to fight back. And a conservation plan built on patience and science actually worked. For decades, the Everglades story was human failure. We failed to contain snakes, failed to remove them, sought high-tech silver bullets that exploded in our faces. But the real solution wasn't robots or drones. It was a native snake and the slow work of restoring the land and bringing back the king. Pythons remain a crisis. The lungworm remains a plague, but footage from Florida's swamps revealed an unexpected aftermath. Resilience. Hope. Against impossible odds, the ecosystem is fighting back. The bobcat that killed Loki proved Florida's wildlife isn't giving up. The wild-born indigo hatchlings proved restoration is possible. These moments don't guarantee victory, but they offer something absent from this story for too long. Possibility. This leaves the final theory. What happens when the eastern indigo's territory, spreading south, collides with python territory spreading north? What happens when the lungworm meets the emperor? What if this parasite infects newly restored indigo snakes? Are we restoring a native species only to feed it to an invisible monster? The real aftermath isn't an ending. It's the start of a three-way war. The python, the parasite, and the emperor. Scientists face unprecedented questions. Will indigos possess natural resistance to the lungworm? Will their presence disrupt the parasite's spread? Or will this microscopic invader prove more devastating than pythons? Some researchers theorize the indigo's diet, consuming other snakes, might make them more vulnerable to lungworm infection. Others suggest their robust immune systems could provide unexpected protection. Nobody knows because this scenario has never occurred in recorded ecological history. After decades watching invasive species destroy one of America's most precious ecosystems, after billions spent on failed technological solutions, after watching 99% of mammals vanish and native reptiles succumb to invisible parasites, something remarkable is happening. Native predators nearly extinct are returning. Wild animals are adapting. Scientists are learning that sometimes the best solution isn't human intervention, but giving nature the tools to heal itself. Are we witnessing ecological recovery or merely the next phase of collapse? The answer lies in Florida's swamps, where pythons still hunt, lungworms still spread, and emperor snakes are reclaiming ancient territory. This three-way war has only begun, and its outcome will determine the fate of one of Earth's most unique ecosystems. The Everglades story reminds us that nature is far more complex and resilient than we imagine. It warns us that our actions have consequences we cannot predict. Every species we remove or introduce creates ripples spreading for generations. The real aftermath of Florida's python invasion isn't just about snakes. It's about humility, patience, and recognizing we're not separate from nature, but part of its intricate, interconnected web. When the eastern indigo's territory finally collides with the python invasion zone, when the microscopic lungworm parasite meets this ancient native predator, we'll discover whether restoration triumphs or whether we've merely added another player to an ongoing catastrophe. The emperor has returned to reclaim its kingdom, the question is, will there be a kingdom left to rule? Only time will reveal whether this desperate gamble represents nature's comeback story or humanity's final miscalculation in a war we were never equipped to win.